TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch, we are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. What's this? Oh, this is just the, you know, shorts and stuff that don't make it to main channels and second channels. We put it on here. But more so for shorts, though. All the little um, things, shorts, you know, short-worthy things that I say during live Twitches or YouTube lives. They go on here. Or even in, inside of videos that, you know. This is ran by Tyon Cam, too, man. Tyon Cam, that's his YouTube channel. I mean, if y'all want to go over there, if y'all want him to do any work for y'all, he does the all of the um, thumbnails he be doing. Uh, he does, This is his first one. We had somebody else doing it, but, you know. But this is his first one. Anyway. That's neither here nor there. Don't forget, we do got the Patreon booming. Everything you can't watch on YouTube, we watch it over here. This is a list of every single episode of everything that's going on. And we do got the Discord as well. All of these links are down in the description. But right now, we got Audi Gang, the Unstoppables, Audi Gang. Like the vehicle, Audi? Okay. All right. Let's hear it. Gangs that specialize in blowing up cash machines have been around in the Netherlands for a long time. But a new phenomenon emerged several years ago. The Audi gang. The criminals drive to Germany in fast cars, blow up an ATM, and drive back to the Netherlands at high speed. The speed, which can even reach 300 kilometers per hour. The and me personally, no clue what that converts to in miles per hour. Just want to let everybody know that off top, so I don't know how fast that is. Journey ending several times in chases and fatal crashes. This dreaded Audi gang has carried out several hundred explosive attacks since 2015. Currently, the German state bordering the Netherlands, North Rhine-Westphalia, had twice as many explosions in the first half of 2022 than in the same period the year before. With the number of 105 attacks in the first half of the year alone, it is no wonder that the value of the loot from these gangs is worth millions of euros. So let me get this straight. In the beginning of this video, I seen a detonation that broke every window in the building. And the cash was still good? Like it didn't shred to pieces or anything? Because y'all money is not quite like paper. It's like plastic or something, right? I, okay. These young robbers have been dubbed the Audi gang by the media due to the make of car that is most often used. It is a group. The media makes it worse when they name them. <laughs> They're like, you get to name them and they like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Like, don't name them. <laughs> group of 200 to 500 people, all Dutch, mainly from Utrecht and Amsterdam, most often with Moroccan origins. But why is it that the trend of these attacks persists in Germany while it is in sharp decline in the Netherlands, with only 20 attacks committed in 2021? Yeah, in 2012. I feel like that's a pretty easy answer. In 2012, it threatened to get so out of control the action was. Als de rechter dat zo uit de hand te lopen, dat er werd ingegrepen. Een landelijk team van de politie ging deze ram en plofkraken grootschalig bestrijden. En nu de cijfers ook. Now the numbers 2013 have just came. Voor 2013 net bekend zijn, blijkt hoe succesvol. Indeed, it is since the year 2013 that Dutch and Belgian banks have made considerable efforts to curb this crime. According to the Dutch Banking Association, NVB, the low probability of a loot and the high probability of being caught paid off. Aside from one history-making... ...episode, 
which occurred in 2015, the situation seemed to calm down. A violent explosion occurred at an ATM in an ING branch in Breda. After a deathly silence, the Audi takes off at high speed with three young men on board towards Belgium. A chase takes place with the gangsters firing Kalashnikovs at the police. Finally, the action ends after the, it's like that. <laughs> the Belgian police placed studded mats on the highway. The trio will be sentenced to a very long prison term. It was GTA 5 RP server, Netherlands. They was really out there getting it, it was up. Y'all gotta do time, y'all have five stars. And it was precisely in this year of 2015 that the problem moved across the border. The German border states remain the most affected. And already at that time, the majority of the bombings in Germany were carried out by the Dutch Audi gang. The police chief of a border state had even described the behavior of the suspects. They are fast and ruthless on the run. We also can't predict in advance where and when they will strike. However, it doesn't always go as planned for the gang. As illustrated by an Audi gang team in early 2016, the three youngsters from Utrecht were returning from the robbery of a telephone store in Erdingen. But things went wrong when the car left the road at high speed. Yikes, shredded the front end of that one. Rear axle, where? <laughs> Two died on the spot, while the third, Yasin C, survived but paraplegic. Yeah, yeah. A month later, in March, another trio slipped away with their Audi RS4 after a successful bomb attack earlier that night in Sparkas in Meppen, Germany. The three lost control of the car, colliding with an oncoming truck and then hitting a tree. Sadik C from Yasin's family dies on the spot. Kevin H survives and the car must be sawed off to extract him. As for the last member, Anwar T, he tried to flee on foot and then took a cab to a nearby hotel. Anwar, covered in blood, is finally arrested after the cab driver gives the police a clue. So, these accidents provide a lot of information about how the gang works. We have the names of the perpetrators, DNA material that we can compare with traces from previous investigations, and a car that can help us on our way. What must be taken into account is that this is not a structured criminal organization, but rather bandits who work in various compositions without consultation. Each theft is organized around three or four people. Yeah, it doesn't look very organized. Like, in my mind, you know what I'm saying? I'm watching this, but in my mind, I'm also thinking, I don't know, this is just how I be thinking. Like, how could somebody else maybe take this and revolutionize it or something? Make it, make it be a better. I don't know why my mind went that way. I don't condone this or anything. I'm just saying, like, there's so many other things that could be done. All right. Each of whom has their own speciality. For example, one of them only takes care of Audi thefts before attacks. For example, Kevin H was a car thief, well known and renowned in his city. But above all, their classic modus operandi seems to be the same everywhere. First, they seal the cracks in the ATM. They then inject a gas mixture through a hose via a portion of a crack left open or a hole in the machine. They then make the gas explode remotely with an ignition system. The explosion forces the safe to the back of the machine so that the cassettes containing the notes can be removed. Sometimes they do the same thing, but by lifting the control panel directly off the counter. But back to the fatal accident of 2016. It appears that Anwar T is indeed Anwar Tari, the nephew of the drug godfather Ridwan Tari, and Anwar has already been imprisoned for several years.
$49 suits are here. Discontinued and clear. $49 suits. That's what you show up to, uh, that's what your public defenders show up to court in. It's tough. He was a former kickboxer from Utrecht, suspected of being affiliated with the Mokro Mafia. Indeed, in the criminal world, it was assumed for a while that Ridwan wanted nothing more to do with Anoa since the explosion in Germany. However, since his release from prison, he would have been useful again in the eyes of the drug lord. Indeed, Anoa had found himself in pre-trial detention for his key role in the murder of Dirk Viersum in September 2019. Mm. Yes, that was his lawyer. Hopefully he ain't had one of them suits on. No, I'm just... All right, let me... He was suspected of being the head of a network in Utrecht involved in the logistics of stolen cars. These were stored in a shed and then sold with new license plates to hitmen ready to take action. In the case of the lawyer, Anoa's team would have provided cars to the executors, including for preliminary observations of the target. There were several indications that Anoa played a leading role in the murder of Viersum. The cars used by the two hitmen were used for reconnaissance for the murder in preparation. And while well, well, that was stupid. <laughs> the two hitmen uh, lead say it again. leading role in the murder of Viersum. The cars used by the two hitmen were used for reconnaissance for the murder in preparation. And were located in a shed in Utrecht, whose lease was found at the home of Anoa under a false name. He would also be seen on surveillance camera footage of the warehouse, not to mention photos of the vehicles found on his phone. It's a crazy paper trail he left behind. However, Anoa's defense advocated a very different version. The fact that our client was allegedly a member of the Audi gang that arranged stolen cars for, among other things, explosions, does not mean that he would have provided cars for the murder of Dirk Viersum. According to a wiretap recorded after the lawyer's murder, Anoa was planning to go abroad for a while. If you're really involved in the Viersum murder and you think you're wanted, you're not staying home. He went to the funeral of a family member in Morocco. He only did it once, parking a car, not knowing what it would be used for. So they was really, really, really on to them. Because wiretaps only occur when they can't get inside, they can't penetrate your, your faction or your, your mob or whatever, you know, firm or whatever you want to call it when they can't penetrate and get somebody on the inside, so they got to do that. Indeed, the lawyers gave details about the fact it? that he was not on the run, as he would have returned to the Netherlands after a few weeks. How could our client have known what these vehicles would be used for? There is no indication of this in the record. In de zwaar beveiligde rechtbank in Osdorp hoorde ik Guillermo B en Moreno B vanmorgen dat zij schuldig zijn aan de For some reason I thought I could understand what was being said. Okay, hold on. Go back. Go back. Okay. This in the record. In the the as Door High Security Court this morning heard Guillermo B and Moreno B. De zwaar beveiligde rechtbank in Osdorp hoorde Guillermo B en Moreno B vanmorgen dat be found guilty of the murder of the lawyer Derek Wiersman two years ago in Buitenwillen. Dat zij schuldig zijn aan de moord op advocaat Derek Wiersum twee jaar geleden in Buitenveldert. Nee. Een liquidatie die de sa a liquidation that yeah, I can read the rest. samenleving schokte en waar zij 30 jaar voor de cel in moeten. Apart from the two executors, the court ruled that there was not enough evidence to know whether Anwar was aware of the murderer's plans in preparing the cars. In addition, Anwar was again the main suspect in another murder attempt. Indeed, an individual getting off a bus in Utrecht was attacked by three hooded men with a demolition hammer who hit him violently in the face before fleeing. Lennar has a hot selection of homes for sale right
But back to the Audi gang. Since the appearance of these groups in Germany, the local police have been hunting them down mercilessly. This has resulted in numerous arrests since then. However, I'm pretty sure once once they showed up, once that Audi gang showed up in Germany, anybody, all the other surrounding gangs or whatever in that area, they probably stopped driving Audis. Audi was a hot car when they came. The problem persists and has even worsened. Indeed, the gas method has become outdated in the eyes of the criminals. They now attack with real explosives, which causes much more damage. The use of this new method had already increased by more than 500% by 2020. This is probably due to increasingly stringent preventative measures, such as a neutralization system that renders money unusable with ink or paint. This new method with explosives was already used in Amsterdam. The explosives, wrapped in tape, are slipped inside the hatch where the money exits the ATM. The police in Amsterdam onderzoekt inmiddels een Amsterdam police are investigating a large grote reeks plofkraken daar de afgelopen vier maanden en vanavond and in the evening het nog niet eerder vertoonde beelden hierop is heel goed te zien hoeveel risico's de daders in it is shown very clearly how much risk the inmiddels nemen in Amsterdam in 12 explosions only once could the loot be taken away this explains why these attacks are not profitable in the Netherlands, where security is higher than in Germany. The fact that the looting zone has shifted to Germany is also not surprising, since the country is heavily dependent on cash, with much more money available in ATMs. Not to mention that Dutch ATMs have begun to move to more residential areas, which discourages robbers from blowing up storefronts to receive double the sentences. On the other side, therefore, in Germany, in 2020, 17 million euros were stolen. And it is in the state of North Rhine-Westphalia that an ATM explodes almost every other day. Dang. Nevertheless, since the cooperation between the German and Dutch police, Audi gang members are increasingly choosing other federal states where less appropriate measures have been taken. Finally, justice caught the first big fish of the criminal network, Tarek B. His gang is said to have caused at least 15 explosions in Germany. And Tarek himself is involved in an attempted murder because of a robbery that got completely out of hand. The explosion caused the building to catch fire from which a family had to escape in extremis. But this police operation, which lasted a year and a half, finally paid off. But I do got a question though, like, they said they start putting the ATMs in more residential areas to prevent them from, from to make them think twice because of longer sentences, but like, aren't you putting the public at risk at that point? It's kind of messed up a little bit. <laughs> For the first time, we were able to experience the organizational and logistical structures of the group. Indeed, in the spring of 2020, Tarek had several ATMs delivered by a German company in Utrecht. It was later revealed that his gang had created a training center. The duo would order different models of ATMs and record tutorials on how to blow them up most effectively. This activity even cost the life of the main suspect, who was filming an experimental explosion. 23 suspects were identified as belonging to this network, with various seizures. Since then, other cases linked to the Audi gang have followed, not forgetting that not only Dutch people are involved in these attacks. Indeed, on numerous occasions, German suspects have tried to imitate the work, because finally, the Audi gang is not a structured organization, but a criminal phenomenon. Europol also assumes that this is a criminal phenomenon and not a series of crimes. And so this phenomenon requires much more time to fight. Oh, no. And moreover, for criminals, there is a career model. 
It generates money and prestige within your own network. <laughs> they made it an Audi symbol. That's that's tough. Tell leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on the post notification. I thought this was the UK, but this is the Netherlands, Dutch, Germany. So, you know, world ting, I guess. I'm gone.